74% of Americans in a recent survey reported commuting to work. Based on the current population, that's about 246 million people who either cycle, drive, hop a train, take a bus, hail a cab, walk, run, or even skateboard to work each and every morning. And that's just in the States. Whichever method you take, or a combination of a few, you'll need a purpose-built pack to carry and protect the daily essentials needed to perform the job. As such, a commuter pack or commuter backpack makes the perfect on-body companion to do so. But what exactly are the differences between a commuter backpack and a normal backpack? There's a few things to look out for. Top among them are weatherproof materials, easy access or quick access organization, and dedicated electronic storage, a versatile size, a robust harness system, and traditionally, even some cycling-specific features, since the cycling industry is largely what has driven commuter backpack innovation first and foremost. As we go through our topics, we'll highlight these features and give you our two cents about the best use case for each and tangentially who we think each commuter pack is best suited for. And as a last note before we jump in, although panniers are usually one of the most cycling specific bag options on the market, our broader approach here lent itself to leaving these dedicated purpose-built bags off our list. We do hope to circle back at a later date to highlight some great options there, and if cycling is something you frequent in terms of commuter transportation, you may want to broaden your search and review at least a few of these bags as well. Anyway, let's dive right in with our first pick from Timbuktu. As we laid out just a moment ago in the introduction, we decided on a broader approach when assembling this guide of our favorite commuter backpacks, including packs well suited for the train, the subway, bus transit, pedestrian commuting, and cycling, but not exclusively catered to the latter. As such, most of our packs pack in, excuse the pun, plenty of versatility for all forms of transportation. One of our favorite versatile commuter packs is the Parker Commuter Backpack from Timbuktu that uses a palpably traditional looking exterior while packing in just as much functionality as more traditional looking cycling packs. On body, this pack is 20.5 inches in height, 13.4 inches wide, and 5.5 inches deep, with a minimum 26 liter capacity with an expandable main compartment allowing for a maximum capacity of 35 liters. While this statement certainly holds true for most all backpacks, on body performance is going to be especially true and a huge factor with commuter packs, and it played a massive part in the selection of our picks. What Timbuktu does so well here is the padding on the back panel. Take a closer look. Timbuktu builds in two thick strips of breathable foam mesh that are notably thick, much thicker than anything else we've seen on a pack in a long time. If your commute involves physical activity like biking or walking, and you're worried about sweat or ventilation, the dense foam padding naturally allows for a central air channel that lets your back breathe almost as if the pack wasn't snug against your body at all. By way of polythylene vinyl acetate, or PVA for short, on this upper section, as well as a welted zipper on the main compartment's track, the Parker Commuter Backpack is extremely robust in terms of water assistance. Plus, there's heavy use on what appears to be nylon ripstop, like the interior of this front magnetic pocket, the interior portion of the expandable gussets, and the whole lining of the main compartment, which we'll get into in just a moment. And if that wasn't enough, because hey, sometimes it isn't when you're forced to walk a dozen city blocks and blocks in heavy rain, Timbuktu has a fully waterproof rain shell tucked into the bottom zipper that wraps around the entirety of the bag. Check it out. In terms of hardware, Timbuktu provides what we assume is aluminum barreled zip poles for every zippered pocket, YKK zippers and hard-wearing Duraflex and Wujin hardware on the sides of the bag attached to the compression straps to aid with security once expanded, and to keep the pack secure on body via an adjustable sternum strap that uses rows of webbing on the exterior faces of the shoulder straps themselves. Two stretch water bottle pockets on each side, a laptop sleeve that accommodates anything up to 15 inches, and a top tricot line zip pocket for protecting your phone or a pair of sunglasses. As a last note about the externals, Timbuktu has built in some highly reflective base paneling here on the front and a bit on the shoulder straps as well to aid with safety at night. We couldn't, in good faith, crown it as our most versatile pick solely by the way it looks, even though it looks pretty damn sleek in our opinion. A versatile commuter pack needs to support a wide variety of use cases. With any backpack, commuters aside, you have to analyze layout and accessibility to accurately rate just how well a bag performs. The Parker Commuter builds in two equally sized side sleeves that stretch and accommodate pretty much any standard size bottle available. The front face uses a total of three easy to access pockets designed for differing sizes of EDC. The topmost zip pocket is lined with tricot and is a perfect place to stow away a phone or anything susceptible to scratches. 
Just below is the largest external pocket protected by a magnetic flap, which unlike the zip pocket above and below, isn't protected with a zip track. The magnets themselves here are pretty robust, but even so, for a bit more security and to deter theft, it would have been nice to have this beefed up by a zipper. Inside, there's just enough room to fit a 6x9 notebook, and you'll also notice a bright orange key leash that uses a metal carabiner on the end. The bottom pocket is perfect for a few pieces of miscellaneous commuter-centric EDC. Now, in front of the main compartment zip track is a large U-shaped track that expands the size of the pack by a few inches and is supported by magnetic hardware. Closest track to the back opens up the main compartment where we stowed a watch roll, pair of sunglasses, change of clothing, over-ear headphones, EDC pouch, and in the only Velcro sub-organization pocket, a few charging cables. Lastly, our 13-inch laptop and a protective sleeve fit comfortably in the dedicated laptop sleeve that hugs the back and can also be accessed from the side using this vertical zip for quick access. To close out each section, for each pack we're going to give a few pros and cons for each. Keep in mind that these bags made the list, so our opinions are more suggestions or internal dialogue about stuff we found the bag did well or maybe came up a little lacking. For the Timbuktu Parker Commuter Backpack, the combination of a comfortable on-body experience, ample weather resistance, expandable size, and lots of front face organization were all things we loved. On the other hand, it would have been great to have a bit more internal organization, even if the external front face provides quite a bit already. That being said, quick access can be more important for some folks than internal organization would be, who need a solution for getting to their gear while active on transportation. In other words, would like to get to their gear while the pack is still on their person. Conversely, making external pockets as weatherproof as internal ones can be quite the challenge. So often, you'll see another class of commuter packs where external storage is slim with little to no sub-organization at all, as is the case with our last few picks who use a simple, tubular, almost dry bag-like construction. Urban commuting is unique in that it often happens by way of completely different forms of transportation than commuting into the city itself from elsewhere whether it be a fast-paced bike ride or a few blocks on a skateboard, or even hopping from commuter train to commuter train, you'll need a lightweight commuting companion dedicated to organizing technology that also builds in considerable convenience on the go and plenty of waterproof. As a product of the city itself, San Francisco-based Air makes our pick for the perfect urban commuter backpack with the City Pack Pro X-Pack, weighing in at just 2.5 pounds and sewn together from VX42 X-Pack by Dimension Polyam highly durable waterproof material. Sometimes commuter backpacks are built to hold a whole lot, and we do have a few picks toward the end that do a good job of doing so. But for only a day's worth of commuter-centric EDC, you often don't need a ton of storage capacity. At 24 liters via an 18-inch height by 12-inch width by 7.5-inch depth, the City Pack is a moderately sized commuter pack with one of the best internal organization schematics we've seen to date. And it's this organizational aspect of the City Pack Pro combined with a hard-wearing X-Pack fabrication that mainly played into our decision. In terms of shape, the City Pack Pro maintains a standard rectangular silhouette and wears as expected when viewed from behind on person. No complaints here. The City Pack Pro X-Pack is, long story short, the City Pack Pro with the X-Pack construction. Air has an entire line dedicated to urban environments aptly named the City Collection, and visually they all have simple refined shapes and signature air visual trademarks like the single front face horizontal pocket, beefy top grab handles, premium hardware, and plush back and shoulder panels. X-Pack from Dimension Polyant is an extremely hard-wearing form of sailcloth, and it's equally waterproof and durable and comparatively to Cordura, which can build in considerable water resistance, the multi-layer construction of X-Pack gives it the leg up. Plus, it does a stellar job of keeping off dust and dirt in the process, something Cordura tends to attract. The X-Pack spec of the City Pack Pro offers YKK AquaGuard zippers and Duraflex hardware for all major compartments, making the exterior virtually impervious to rain. You also get one water bottle sleeve built into the pack side, and one small quick access stowaway pocket on the other side that builds in a key leash. On the back side, the City Pack Pro uses an extensive amount of very high quality foam padding and leaves an air channel down the center which houses its own luggage pass through, certainly making this pack an option for short weekend trips or commutes to an airport in addition to daily commutes. As we just mentioned, virtually every air pack, city collection aside, uses a single horizontal front zip track and they reveal a pocket that usually doesn't have much organization, perfect for storing a notebook, ours 6x9 in size. Just above, we've got another front pocket that extends from the middle zip to the top of the bag where we packed away a pen, a power bank, a pair of earbuds, a laptop charger in the zip pocket, featuring a see-through mesh, and a charging cable. 
Just behind the handle is a smaller stowaway pocket lined with tricot to pad a phone or a pair of sunglasses, an elastic water bottle sleeve on the pack side, and on the 180, like we said, a small pocket that builds in a key leash, and just enough room to fit probably three to four small EDC items, like a lock. Now onto the main pocket. The City Pack Pro, again like most air packs, uses a clamshell style. It's going to be a matter of opinion, but compared to roll top bags, clamshell backpacks are far easier to pack away and to clearly find what you're searching for without rummaging through the bottom of a dark bag. Anyway, in this zip pocket here, we stashed a few personal care items and a pair of sunglasses in the zippered pocket just below. Opposite this face is where the bulk of the capacity lies, where we loaded out an EDC pouch, a pair of headphones, a watch roll, change of clothes, and a piece of literature in the elastic sleeve toward the back's back face. You could also just as easily store a small laptop here as well, in a protected sleeve. If you're in a theft prone area, air's got you covered. Behind the tricot pocket is a hidden air tag pocket, which is a nice city centric build characteristic. Lastly, we have the padded laptop sleeve where we fit our 13 inch laptop with a protective sleeve and a few pieces of literature as well in front of the single subdivider. By the way, this high visibility orange interior is a feature of X-Pack airbags only. It certainly helps with visibility, but not everyone likes the color. The rest of the city collection and other non x pack bags are lined with a light gray interior. In terms of accessibility, we also love how the City Pack Pro can largely stand by itself with a flat bottom panel. Now, there is absolutely so much to like about the Air City Pack Pro X Pack. It does an excellent job of keeping water out while simultaneously thinking about the end user experience in the process, something a lot of our other bags could admittedly do a little bit of a better job with. Not only is it waterproof and well organized, but it's also extremely comfortable and lightweight at just 2.5 pounds on body on packed. Minor grips aside, like our wish for larger hip flaps or welds to prevent slippage or shifting during heavy motion on person, they are just that, very minor. There are plenty of backpack manufacturers who roll out commuter bags, but few orient their entire company around the idea of commuting. Chrome Industries out of San Francisco, a well-established hub of cycling, offers up the Urban EX 2.0 backpack, a 100% welded roll top back with a considerable 30 liter capacity and a notably weatherproof exterior sewn together from 600D polyester beefed up with a TPU backing. Currently for under $100 combined with the value it offers in terms of features and build quality, we're giving it our best value pick for the purpose of this guy. By way of a 21 inch to 26.5 inch height depending on the length of the roll, a 16 inch width and a 6 inch depth, the Urban EX 2.0 maintains a 30 liter internal storage capacity. We'll get into how much that stores in just a few minutes, but before we do so, let's take a look at the well built back panel. Although the padding itself isn't necessarily thick, the 6 triangular upper panels and single larger lower back panel are made of a highly dense and comfortable foam that do a great job of staying flexible in order to contour to the body, and simultaneously, their positioning allow for a number of air channels for ventilation. Similar to what we mentioned before with the Air City Pack Pro, we do wish Chrome built in slightly larger hip flaps or welts. Even though it's not a hiking pack, which these larger hip flaps are a staple of, it would be nice to have a bit more here to prevent the bag from slipping left to right if you were to say rocking side to side on a bike, since it doesn't build in a hip strap of any kind. Nonetheless, the hardware itself is premium. The sternum strap is plastic while the adjustable shoulder strap hardware is metal, but both are all blacked out and rendered quite similar to the eye. On the front side of the pack are three rows of reflective attachment loops for a U-lock and storage. Now, if your absolute main priority is waterproofing, this is one of the bags in this guide that you should be looking at, since it doesn't have any external pockets, and the roll top quite literally makes this a dry bag with straps. If your locale is say the Pacific Northwest, this could certainly be an option worth considering, but if you're in a spot where rain is an infrequent occurrence, then well perhaps the lack of external pockets will be more of an inconvenience in the long run. Now because of the very rudimentary build, again basically a dry bag on steroids, the on-body experience certainly isn't as comfy as some of our other picks. The shoulder straps do build in a touch of padding, but nothing even close to something like the Air City Pack Pro. Quite typical of a highly waterproof roll top bag is the lack of external pockets. As such, this commuter pack only uses a single main compartment with a magnetic flap and two really premium feeling grab handles at the top. The 30 liter capacity with the open configuration certainly lends itself to maximizing the amount of packing space. 
As such, we were able to stow away quite a bit of gear, including a watch roll, a pair of sunglasses, change of clothing, water bottle, two EDC pouches, a laptop charger, over your headphones, a pen, charging cable, and a ring of keys attached to a key leash, as well as our 13-inch laptop in a protective sleeve and a 6x9-inch notebook. A few things to note, these roll-top commuter bags usually won't build in much internal organization. Chrome uses just enough here to check the box, but certainly not a ton. A laptop sleeve, a few slip pockets for pens or knives, a zip pocket, and a key leash, which did not feature any sort of carabiner or quick release feature, something we'd like to see in any next iteration. If this water bottle cap were to come loose, it could be a disaster, so just make sure you're loading out the pack with care, tighten those caps, and perhaps even go with a waterproof laptop sleeve as well. We more or less covered these points, but here's our two cents in terms of pros and cons, just to recap. This bag excels at weatherproofing your carry. No doubt about that, and if that's a major concern, this is going to be a great pack for you. However, on the flip side, because it doesn't have any external storage, that means something like a water bottle will have to live inside the bag with your tech, since we assume tech will be incorporated into your commuting or office-centric EDC. We like to highlight American-made gear here at High Consumption, and that's for many reasons, a long list of reasons that we don't fully have time to lay out now. But trust us when we say it's important, and we'd even go so far as to say vital, to the health of the broader US economy and our regional and state economies. Not only does North Street Bags produce their packs stateside, but they also have a very transparent business model when it comes to sustainability. You can read more about their efforts on the North Street website, but their sustainable practices don't just involve sourcing sustainable materials, but they extend into how they operate their office and production spaces as well. So as such, our best American-made commuter backpack pick goes to North Street Bags, who make the Roll Top Davis Day Pack, a simple, affordable commuter pack with everything you need and nothing you don't. The Davis Day Pack is one of the smallest on our list at 18 inches tall by 10 inches wide by 5.75 inches deep, which allows for a 14 liter capacity when rolled tight and a 24 inch height and 20 liter capacity when fully unrolled. At one pound, four ounces unpacked, it's also one of the lightest. This is a very simple pack, just enough for a day's worth of gear, but really no more. On the outside, the Davis Day Pack only builds in one horizontal zip pocket with a waterproof track and two side water bottle sleeves of the same size. The back panel comes without any padding and the shoulder straps do have mesh and the slightest bit of foam, but very little, as if there was none there at all. One very basic and fully adjustable sternum strap, no hip straps or hip flaps, and a very basic buckle held roll top closure. The bag may look simple, the bag may also be simple in reality, but the matte black exterior is actually one of the most cutting edge fabrics in production. Cordura's 1000D Recycled Recore, made from 100% post-consumer recycled material. Plus, it's DWR coated to withstand light showers. 1000D is what North Street Bags calls virgin ballistic nylon, which is basically just fancy for really damn tough. And although the Davis Day Pack doesn't really have the front real estate to accommodate a full-sized U-lock, as the bag itself is rather small, there is a single loop of webbing on the front in case you'd like to attach a light or reflective add-on for some extra safety at night. The Davis Day Pack aligns itself with our other roll-top commuter bags in that the external organization is minimal, a single non-elastic water bottle sleeve, and a protected zip track on the front face. Even though the pack itself is small in size, the water bottle pocket was large enough for our bottle that measures up at 3 inches by 12 inches with the cap included. The front pocket, when the main compartment is loaded out, isn't all that accommodating in terms of size, but it'd be fine for a small notebook or like we did here, a few personal care items. Secured with a beefy buckle is the main real estate. Even though the bag is the smallest on our list, dimensionally speaking, the cavernous main compartment fits a lot. A watch roll, pair of sunglasses, change of clothing, over ear headphones, an EDC pouch, and a 13 inch laptop in a padded sleeve. It's a little difficult to show, but North Street uses this removable Velcro suborganization network that attaches to the interior of the back face about halfway up the bag. Now, as handy as it is for stowing away and organizing some EDC like a pen, charging cable, power bank, etc., there's no dedicated laptop sleeve. So, if you populate the sleeve, attach it to the interior, then pack away your laptop in front of the sleeve, your laptop will put pressure on the EDC in the sleeve, and then create a high spot that pushes against your back. Combine this with the fact that the back panel doesn't use any sort of back padding, this layout can get uncomfortable on the body. An easy fix would be to put a laptop sleeve behind this lattice, much like Chrome has done with the Urban EX 2.0, and while they're at it, just a bit of back padding. 
Now, simplicity is fine, but we do have a few notes worth mentioning. Minor improvements we think Nord Street could make if they have another generation in the works. At the top of this list would be a sturdier buckle system. Now, the buckle itself is fine, but the strap system could do a better job of keeping enough tension on the roll top closure to keep your peace of mind, well, peaceful in any sort of inclement weather. Second, we hope to see any sort of bag padding, as we said before, and beefier shoulder straps on the next round. These should be fairly simple integrations with mesh or foam, as right now the back has little to no padding at all, which would also provide air channels for ventilation in the process. So really just to recap, the Davis Daypack is great for light use, but repeated use for daily commutes could warrant something just a bit more premium with a more comfortable on-body experience. We're traveling from the States all the way to Europe, where German-based Ortlieb crafts a premium roll-top style commuter backpack aptly named, well, the City Commuter Daypack. Directness and sincerity is certainly a German culture trait, and the straightforward nature of this bag and its name doesn't leave much room for surprise. What surprised us, however, was just how premium it felt in person, and how much we loved it once we put it through its paces. In typical well-engineered German form, we've decided to give the Ortlieb City Commuter Daypack our pick for the best waterproof commuter backpack, for its sleek, waterproof exterior with full RF welded construction, straightforward but highly effective roll-top closure, and a handful of premium hardware details and construction considerations. Currently, the Ortlieb City Commuter Daypack is offered in two volumes, 21 liters and 27 liters. We got hands-on with a 27 liter, which has a 25 inch height when fully unrolled and a 17 inch width. It's a large bag, more so in terms of width than height, so keep that in mind. Here's a shot on body to show what we're talking about. Ortlieb has sewn the city commuter together with PS33, a highly waterproof PU-coated nylon that gives the bag's main compartment, not the single external stash pocket unfortunately, an IP64 rating, complete protection against dust and full protection from water splashes from any direction. It's rare that bags which aren't specifically categorized as dry bags have IP ratings, so Ortlieb has taken the waterproofing seriously here with a fully welded main compartment, ensuring your commuting EDC is completely taken care of even in the worst down pours or dust storms. As we said, it's essentially a dry bag, but has one water protected zip track right here toward the bottom right for any sort of small EDC for quick access. Think a wallet, pair of keys, knife, etc. Even though the IP rating doesn't quite cover this exterior stash pocket, it also uses a welded construction and employs a waterproof zip track to ensure it's highly protected nonetheless. The bag's bottom panel is also completely flat and seems to be beefed up with a double layer construction so you'd be able to lay the pack on the ground to stand by itself while unloading or loading gear. Some notches here on the front for a U-lock, and we love the metal hardware that secures the roll top in place. On the 180, the back panel is pretty interesting. We have a few thoughts. Here's what we love. The foam padding is thick and plentiful, and it provides a lot of support all the way up and down the back, while also allowing for plenty of air channels for ventilation. However, and while we didn't experience this yet, these foam panels are largely unprotected, and with continuous abrasive force of wearing it while active, we could potentially see them peeling off over time. Again, we can't confirm this since we didn't experience it during our time with the pack, but we thought it was worth mentioning since they are held on with adhesive. We also love the hex screw attachment points for holding the shoulder straps and hip straps in place. It gives an extra sense of security for the stress points. Since the bag is large and does get quite heavy with a lot of gear, we do wish there was some sort of padding on the interior portion of the shoulder straps to prevent them from digging in while on person. Inside the large 27 liter main compartment, we were able to fit a watch roll, a pair of sunglasses, a water bottle, a change of clothes, two EDC pouches, over ear headphones, a 13 inch laptop and a padded sleeve within the padded and removable interior sleeve, a few notebooks, a laptop charger, pair of earbuds, and a charging cable. Quite similar to Chrome, Ortlieb uses a backside suborganization panel that keeps the laptop and other small tech accessories protected and in place against the back during transit. For a largely unorganized roll top bag, this is certainly a welcome build quality. Also, as a quick note, this panel is removable with Velcro, and this certainly helps while loading or unloading your laptop and electronics, while Chrome's and the Urban EX 2.0 is sewn in. You have to stow away your water bottle inside with your tech, and that can certainly produce some anxiety if your bag's going to experience some jostling during any sort of commute. Also, like we had mentioned, we'd like to see some sort of padding on the shoulder straps. It doesn't have to be extensive, just a little something there to prevent the tough PS33 from digging into the shoulders over time. With the official IP64 rating, if you're someone who absolutely needs complete water protection for a commute or short trips, then you should seriously consider the City Commuter Daypack. Plus, its simple, minimalist form is pretty easy on the eyes.
London-based Rafa has built up quite the reputation in the cycling world since their launch in 2004, supplying premium cycling-centric sportswear and bags with a keen mastery of form needs function. With the Rafa 30-liter backpack, we've landed on this commuter bag as the best cycling pick. As the name quite clearly lays out, the Rafa backpack uses a mid to upper range 30 liter capacity. There is also a 20 liter version available as well if you're concerned about size, but for versatility, we'd suggest something at the very least between 20 to 30 liters, no less for commuting. Dimensionally, this works out to a width measured at the bottom panel of 11.4 inches wide by 29 inches in height when fully unrolled. Although it is a roll top back like the few we just reviewed, it has a far less technical form and does a good job of looking a bit more like a traditional backpack in terms of shape and aesthetic than the other barrel shaped designs we've seen, if that's something of importance to you. We dubbed the Rafa backpack as our best cycling pack for a few main reasons, top among them being an uber comfortable on body, courtesy of plus shoulder padding and a well ventilated back panel two vertical zip pockets on the front face, great for quick access cycling EDC, and the large front strip of reflective material for safe rides at night. Now, Rafa does something a little bit different to protect against water, dirt, and debris. Taking a note from sailors of old and some modern trucker style jackets, they've chosen a 100% oil waxed 420D nylon instead of something PU coated or even DWR coated. Even though the material construction does go in a different direction than the rest of the pack, the roll top MO more or less carries over. In other words, you only get two vertical zip pockets on the exterior for anything quick access like a U-lock and other small EDC. Apart from that, you'll have to stow everything in the main compartment. You also get a pretty premium looking and quite functional central row of reflective material between the black wax nylon, building in some safety during those late night commutes from the office. Shoulder straps are padded and comfy, an adjustable sternum strap is present and so are hip flaps, but they're not necessarily anything to write home about. The Rafa 30 liter backpack has a three pocket layout. The first two exterior front pockets come well organized with a mix of zips, elastic, mesh, and tricot. For EDC you're inclined to use during transit, like a pair of earbuds, charging cables, a watch roll, a pair of keys tethered to the built-in key leash, and a piece of small technology in either lined tricot pocket. We opted for the zip protected one up north. This goes for all our bags, but this is just an example to provide some scale. You'll want to organize and tailor your carry to what you use most and for what makes sense for your day to day. Pockets are endlessly reconfigurable. On the other side, the vertical exterior zip pocket protects two elastic pockets for another small batch of EDC, like a pair of sunglasses and a few personal care staples. By unclipping the two side clips that hold the roll top in place inside the main roll top compartment, you can fit quite a bit since the interior only builds in a soft line laptop sleeve, and that's it as far as organization. The rest will be up to you, so we'd recommend some pouches or other purpose-built methods of sub-organization to avoid your EDC falling to the bottom chaotically during transit. Inside, we opted for a change of clothing, a 12-inch water bottle, a 13-inch laptop and a protective sleeve, some literature and a few notebooks, a pair of over-ear headphones, two medium-sized EDC pouches, and last, but certainly not least, our laptop charger. All in all, this is an excellent pick for someone who likes the roll-top construction, large capacity, and a decent amount of waterproofing, but wants a balance of more traditional backpack features, like a good amount of comfortable shoulder padding. It also has Mission Workshop brake-like exterior organization, courtesy of those two vertical zips on the outside of the bag that come in handy for quick access that most of our other roll-top bags in this guide completely do without, to really beef up water assistance. Conversely, these pockets are not nearly as weather resistant as other ones we've seen, so keep that in mind that any sort of really important carry would need to go inside the largely unorganized main compartment if water incursion is a concern. And of course, there's the bright pink interior lining. You're either going to love it or hate it, but it's a factor worth mentioning and a trademark Rafa build characteristic, much like the use of gray on the interior of Airs bags and backpacks. We do wish Rafa provides a few different colorway options, but it's not a deal breaker, and like high visibility orange, which would have been a stellar choice here if not for pink, helps locate items in a large, undivided compartment quickly, much like the Air City Pack Pro's bright orange interior. And one last note before moving on, this laptop sleeve fit our 13 inch MacBook just fine, but it will be a tight fit for anything much larger. Literally named after the district in which they were founded and operate in the heart of cycling-centric San Francisco, Mission Workshop is one of the preeminent commuter-oriented bag brands in existence today, building hyper-premium backpacks and bags with very technical appearances with very technical specifications that hold up extremely well in all sorts of extreme conditions. Our best premium commuter backpack pick goes to the Rambler by Mission Workshop. 
and there's a few reasons for this. First off, as we said, Mission Workshop bags are hyper-engineered, not over-engineered because there's a practical daily use case for the specs they build in, but hyper-engineered in terms of thought behind the user experience. What's more, this pack is extremely versatile in terms of size, and they make this possible in a well-engineered manner. The pack is expandable from 22 liters all the way up to 44 liters, or double the baseline capacity, by unzipping only one fully waterproof zip track. We'll show you exactly how this happens when we overview the interior, but trust us, it's so cool. Since the bag does expand significantly from 22 liters all the way up to double its size to 44 liters, there are really two sets of dimensions. The baseline is as follows, 13 inches wide by 19 inches tall by 5 inches deep. But when expanded, the depth goes from 5 inches to approximately 13 at the bag's top as it unfolds in a V-shape, widening at the top and tapering near the bottom. The Rambler is sewn together from HT500 and Multicam Cordura with a black diamond ripstop liner for a really high degree of water resistance. Mission Workshop doesn't offer an IP rating, and the non-VX versions of their bags are certainly less waterproof than the X-Pack editions, but speaking from experience, both specs offer really stellar protection against the elements. The exterior does look quite tame in comparison to Mission Workshop's other packs, and we're thinking specifically about the Rake, which is another contender for a great commuter or general work pack. It has far less exterior flaps, buckles, and zip pockets, and instead opts to protect all the real estate under three main compartment zippers, and only uses one small stash pocket on the bag's lower right. So you can swing the pack to your side and grab anything you need quickly without having to take the pack off. The adjustable front central strap and buckle keeps the roll top or flap down in check and secure. On the 180, you have considerable padding on the back panel and interior portions of the shoulder straps via a highly breathable mesh toward the top and some denser material protected by the Cordura near the bottom for increased abrasion resistance. We love the shape of the pack overall, as it really hugs the body without a lot of effort. In other words, you don't have to feel like you need to over tighten the sternum strap or shoulder straps to feel as though the Rambler is secure on your person. On the front of the shoulder straps is Mission Workshop's own archive rail system for attaching their own custom accessories, like a cell phone pocket for example. We won't dive deep on this modular system, but it's a really neat proprietary build quality that you should certainly check out in more detail on Mission Workshop's website should you have the time. Smaller but no less important external details include YKK zippers and waterproof zip tracks for every compartment, paracord-like poles, and a drainage hole on the bottom face of the bag in case of considerable water incursion. The Rambler is largely laid out in a four-pocket configuration, one of which resides on the exterior here, where you can stow away a small EDC for quick access. We chose a few pieces just to illustrate size and capacity, but obviously you'll want to tailor this carry to what you use most day to day. The other three pockets are under the flap system and roll top system, which you can secure in a number of different ways by rolling, folding, and then buckling the central buckle to secure. Anyway, there are three zip pockets and all of them are top to bottom open cavity compartments without any sub-organization. The Mission Workshop brake also uses this for the main compartment, so the build style is as expected. Alright, so the first compartment lives under this front flap, protected by a waterproof zip. Like we said, the Rambler largely just uses an unorganized open configuration on the interior, so we'd recommend storing, or at the very least organizing small EDC into pouches, since they will fall straight to the bottom and bounce around during transit if you don't. In this compartment, we stowed a small water bottle and a change of clothes. Going from the front to the back, the second zip track simply expands the pack from that baseline 22 liters to the larger 44 liters depending on how much you loosen those compression support straps. This central zip is where the second compartment resides, also an open, undivided layout. We put a few EDC pouches inside, a watch roll, a pair of sunglasses, and a pair of headphones, but when the compression straps are fully expanded, there's room for a lot more. This is important to note, and difficult to show because of the bag's all blacked out interior. This compartment and the next and last compartment closest to the back share the same external housing, so you'll probably want to put equal amounts of carry in each compartment if you plan on using them both. In other words, if you end up filling this compartment to the brim, you may find you don't have any room in the backmost compartment. We hope that makes some sense. Inside the last compartment, we tucked a laptop charger, a few notebooks, and our 13-inch laptop inside. In some form or another, most of our picks have expandable sizes, whether that's in the form of an expandable zipper or a roll-top closure. 
but with an expandable size that doubles the baseline volume, the Rambler is the de facto pick for someone whose commuter EDC changes in capacity from day to day. We also love the water protected tracks on every zipper, the large and comfortable hip flaps that allow the bag to naturally conform to the body, and the options for adding additional accessories like an Austria Alpen Cobra quick release buckle or their own archive system based accessories. If you've landed on the Rambler as one of your favorites in this guide, it's pretty distinct in terms of style compared to our other picks. So you might instead be wondering whether or not the Mission Workshop Rambler is the right commuter focused choice for you over the Mission Workshop Brake if you like a technical appearance. Both are great commuting options, and as we laid out in this section's introduction, Mission Workshop is San Francisco based, and their co-founder even co-founded Chrome, another San Francisco based brand that we highlighted. Long story short, the Rake has more external pockets and more sub-organization, and is more vertically oriented than the Rambler, which conversely has less external organization, virtually none to speak of, and a shorter, boxier overall profile. Like we said, both are extremely great options for commuting, and it will most definitely come down to personal preference. And so that's a wrap for our guide. If you've been searching for a commuter backpack, we hope you saw something that sparked your interest. If not, keep looking around, and while you're at it, take a peek at our .com for even more suggestions and our editorial profile. And as always, let us know your favorite packs for commuting. We'd love to hear from you.